Hello guys, in this video we are going to talk about the morphology and anatomical structure of central incisor. So this is the left central incisor and it is two in number right and left central incisor. And we can study this central incisor from four aspects. This is the facial surface. So as it lies throughout the face, so this is called facial surface. And this is behind is called lingual surface. This surface lies towards the tongue. So this is called lingual surface. And this is called mesial surface. This, if we study from here, this aspect, this is called mesial aspect. As this surface lies toward the midline, so this is called mesial surface. And this is the distal surface. If you study from this surface, this is distal surface as it is away from the midline. So before we get started, let's see the chronology of this central incisor. So the first Evidence of calcification start at three to four months of intrauterine life, and the enamel is completed at four to five years, and this tooth erupt at around seven to eight years. Now let's see the measurement of this teeth. So the cervical incisor length of the crown is ten point five mm. So if we measure this length of the crown from cervical here to the incisor here, and the length would be ten point five mm. And the length of the root is 13 mm. So from the cervical line to the tip of the root, it is 13 mm. And also mesial distal diameter is 8.5 mm. So this is the mesial side. And from here to distal side, it would be 8.5 mm. And mesial distal diameter at cervix. So these are the cervical area. So mesial distal diameter at this area is 7 mm. And the function of this tooth is is it helps in cutting of food and also it helps in speech so this is the main tooth that helps in aesthetic without this tooth people would look funny and it also helps to close the mouth oral cavity so why do we need to study about the morphology of these teeth because these teeth morphology are very important in the developing of prosthesis or restoration of the teeth and also during extraction we can know the morphology and it helps to extract easily. The central incisor can rotate easily without the breaking. So it, as it has only single root, so it can be rotated easily within the alveolus bone without being fractured. So that's why the morphology are important. Now let's study this tooth from the facial aspect. So this is the facial aspect. It is also called labial aspect as it lies throughout the lips. So the shape of the crown is roughly trapezoid shape. So if you see the shape of the crown, it resembles to the trapezoid. So this is the shape of the crown. And the cervical incisor length is greater than mesiodistal length. So if we measure the length from cervical to incisal, this seems greater than the length on the mesial to distal. So this length is greater than this length. And also, it is less convex than maxillary, maxillary lateral incisor and canine. So if we compare this tooth with maxillary, maxillary lateral incisor or canine, this teeth seems to be less convex. And the mesial outline is slightly convex or straight. So here's the mesial outline. So this is the mesial outline. And this is more straight and slightly convex when you compare with the distal outline. And distal outline is more convex than mesial outline. So this distal outline is more convex than mesial outline. Well, this is more straight and this is more convex. And the next one is the mesial contact area lies at the incisal third. So we know that this tooth contact with the right central incisor and also on the uh, lateral incisor. So if we divide the crown into three equal half, so this would be the cervical third, this would be the middle third and this is the incisal third. So that means this tooth and this tooth contact at around incisal third. So here's this is the incisal third. So this tooth and this tooth contact at the incisal third here. Also on the distal side, this tooth and this tooth contact. The distal contact area lies at the junction of incisal and me middle third. So this tooth and this tooth contact at the junction of incisal and middle third. So this is the junction of incisal and middle third. So this tooth contact around this area. So this is the distal contact area. The mesio incisal line angle is sharp. So if you see the mesio incisal line angle, 
so here is the mesial inside the line angle this is more sharp and reachable to 90 degree while the distal inside the line angle is rounded so here is the distal inside the line angle and these are more rounded the incisal outline is regular and straight so here's the incisal outline and this is regular and somehow straight and the cervical outline is semicircular so this is the cervical outline and this resembles to semicircular and root is cone shape as you can see here it has a single root and this resembles to cone shape and it has blonde apex as you can see the apex of the root so it has a blonde apex and root is slightly lower slightly distal to the central line of the tooth so if we draw the central line of the tooth here the root seems slightly offset from the central line now let's see the lingual aspect as it lies toward the tongue so called lingual aspect and the outline of the crown is trapezoid in shape if we draw the outline of the crown this resembles to the trapezoid in shape and it has concavity at the lingual fossa and convexity at the cingulum so here this is the lingual fossa this depressed structure it is called lingual fossa while this elevated structure it is called uh, cingulum so if you see from the side you can see the depressed structure at the lingual fossa and while there is elevation at this cingulum so it is it has concavity and convexity concavity is at the lingual fossa and convexity is at the cingulum the lingual fossa is at the incisal third of the crown and it is M or W shape. So if we again divide the crown into three equal half, you can see the lingual fossa is somehow present at the incisal third. And this, and this uh, li lingual fossa is M or W shape somehow. So it is M or inverted W shape. Also, the cingulum is well developed at the incisal third of the crown. So this cingulum is well developed at the incisal third of the crown and root is singular and root and crown tapered lingually now let's see the mesial aspect of the tooth so here is the mesial aspect and if we see the shape of the mesial aspect it resembles to the triangular way shape so here is the shape so this resembles to the somehow triangular or it look like way shape so this is the shape the cervical line is curved incisally so this is the cervical line and it curves toward the incisal here and also the labial outline is slightly convex so he, this is the labial outline and this seems slightly convex while the lingual outline is convex at cingulum and concave at marginal ridge and convex at incisal edge so if we check the uh, lingual outline it is Con convex at this single lump here and it is slightly concave at marginal ridge so here's the marginal ridge and it is slightly concave and again it is slightly convex at incisal edge so here's a little bit convex so this is the shape of the mesial aspect now let's see the distal aspect so here's the distal aspect and this is again somehow wedge shape or triangular shape so the if we draw the outline of the crown it resembles to the wedge shape or triangular shape and this has greatest and facial lingual width at the cervical third so in the cervical area so here's the cervical area so width from the facial to lingual is greatest so it has the greatest facial lingual width than on the mesial side and also it is uh, the labial outline is slightly convex as in mesial as in mesial side and and the, at the cingulum it is also slightly convex and concave at the marginal ridge and slightly convex at the incisal area so just like in mesial side so here is the incisal aspect so this is the incisal aspect and this is straight and center over root and the mesial distal width is greater than the facial lingual width of course so the mesial distal width this is greater than the facial lingual width and also it has mesial labial and distal labial line angle prominent and in conclusion this is the widest anterior teeth and the shape is square or rectangular and it has straight mesial outline while distal outline is rounded and the lingual fossa and cingulum is well developed